Jamal Nayaz here with the horror icon himself, John Jarrett at Monopoly Events for Love of Horror. Now, you've had a lot of crazy fan interactions this weekend. What has been the most fun? Uh, I really enjoy the Q&A. Uh, I've never done, I've done lots of Q&As, but it was like a stadium full of people. There's so many people out there. And um, the highlight of it was I like to walk amongst them and I don't like sitting on the stage. So I thought, I'll just jump down off the stage. And I jumped off the stage and I clipped the big speaker box on the way down and I went arse over head and, and slammed into the concrete. <laughs> and everyone went, Ugh. And I laid there and went, mm, no, I'm not hurt. So I got up and I punched the shit out of the speaker. <laughs> and, and I was fine, you know. I looked like a real tough guy. But I do know how to fall. I knew when I was going down, I said, hit, hit the back, you know. Go on the back. So that was interesting. Yeah. Oh, well, when I asked about the interaction with fans, I didn't expect that to be the answer, but I'm yeah. so glad that it was. Now, we know obviously Wolf Creek was an immense hit when it came out. And it was a stark contrast to the roles that you were playing before because you were always playing the nice guy, the yeah. warm hearted guy. Yeah. And then next, you're a psychotic hunter killer. Like, yeah. where did that come from within you? Were you just like, I'm sick of playing the nice guy now? No, no. I. I mainly played um, good old country boys, basically. So I'm, I'm from the bush, and um, you know, and I can ride horses and stuff like that. So anything with a horse in it, I got the gig. You know, it's halfway there, and so I did a lot of period stuff and a uh, fair bit of outback stuff because of my upbringing, and uh, and and nice guys, yeah, a lot of nice guys. But I, I played a couple of a uh, couple of assholes <laughs> in my time. To get, to get into a, a character like Mick was. Um, it's a great challenge to nail something like that. And, and the ending of that first film was absolutely brutal because we've been known as horror fans. We kind of know that the final girl will come out on top, but that wasn't the case in Wolf Creek. You walk off into the sunset yeah. and it spawned a franchise. We've got the third one coming out, hopefully, yeah. in the next year or two. You know, What was that experience like when you read the script for the first time? Was that like, wow, this is something different? Yeah. When I read the script, I thought, this is a really good script. I think this could do well. I didn't know it was going to go crazy all over the world. But, and then I met, met Greg McLean, who wrote the film, and he didn't have enough money to make it. He never directed a film in his life. Uh, he'd done, you know, shorts and, you know, bits and pieces, commercials. And he's a director of photography. Uh, he just worked with him, never, never shot a drama. And then they couldn't afford to get um, English uh, actresses. They had to get Australian ones and they had to pull off a Pommy accent. And we're doing the middle of Central Australia on 1.2 million. And so I walked away thinking, bugger, it could have been a good film. I didn't think they could do it. But Greg McLean is similar to Peter Weir. I did a film called Picking Hang Rock back in 1970. Four when you were still a thought in your old man. I was, bag. yeah, I was not around in that time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was my, f and anyway, Peter Weir was the director, who's a very famous director, and so um, Greg is much the same. Peter had never directed a film, and he made a classic, and uh, and Greg was the same. So thankfully, he, he exploded it off the screen and. And uh, I got the character right, and uh, we were fine. You know, when I've been hearing you talk just then, when you were doing some signings, it seems like you are a big horror fan. Where did that originate from? What were some of the films that were heavily influential to you? And, yeah, you're still a massive horror fan today. I wouldn't call myself massive. Um, I like horror films that could happen. You know, that's what I'm, why I'm very attracted to Mick Taylor, because it happens, mm -hmm. that sort of shit. And um, my favourite horror films are um, uh, Psycho uh, and uh, Cape Fear with Robert De Niro and uh, Hannibal Lecter. And um, I, I don't like um, films where the actor is a mask, you know. I think Freddy Krueger and, um, and Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, that, that, that's... It's unbelievable, and oh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is believable, 
but why wear the stupid mask? You know. Don't tell that to any of the guests today. <laughs> we've got we've got all of them here. We've got Leatherface, Jason, Michael Myers. Yeah, well, I I'm not attracted to, you know, masks. I like people to be able to act without the mask. You know, and it's, so they're the kind of horror films I like. I, and zombies, zombies. I mean, they walk slower than your nana. <laughs> There's bits falling off them. And you're like, got to get away. <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs> if you walk fast, you can get away. And I reckon if Mix or a bunch of those, he'd put so many, so many two, four, three bullets into the bloody things that they'd be just a mess and they wouldn't be able to put themselves back together because they'd be a bit of their mates. No, I just don't like, I don't like that horseshit zombie movies, you know. You made a good point there, though. Mick Taylor crossing over into another horror universe. Yeah. What one-on-one -on -one fight would you want to see Mick Taylor in? Out of all the horror icons, and we know that you're not the greatest fan of some of them. Oh, gee, that's a hard question. Crossover film. Well, I don't watch the other ones, so I can't tell you. I don't know them. So it's pretty hard for me to tell you because... Norman I, Bates? Huh? Norman Bates? Psycho? Oh, no, but they're not crossover. They're, they're, they're like Mick Taylor. Oh, well, probably Robert De Niro because he's a tough bastard, you know? Yeah, yeah. But uh, no, no, the psycho guy wouldn't last five minutes. <laughs> and, and and Anthony Hopkins, he's a nice guy, but I think I'd beat the shit out of him. <laughs> and, um, but, yeah, I would think Robert De Niro would be a tough bastard. Yeah. Yeah. And was it true, because you obviously had a cameo in Django Unchained. Yeah. Now, Tarantino wanted to cash you in the film before, but for whatever reason, that couldn't happen. Yeah. Was that through Wolf Creek? Was he a huge fan no. of that? How did that happen? Um, I was um, in northern New South Wales, about 800 miles from Sydney, where I was living. And I got a phone call from my agent uh, on the mobile in 2003, I hadn't made Wolf Creek. Right. And uh, he, he apparently got off the plane and said, I want to meet John Jarrett. He's my favorite Australian actor. Wow. And I went, so I got this. I said, well, I'm well, in northern New South Wales. I can't get to the bloody Kill Bill tonight. <laughs> There's no way. And I hung up and I thought he probably says that about Russell and everyone else. Anyway, and then I got home and rang back again. He says, um, Tarantino's really upset you can't make it and is wondering whether you can go and have a drink with him at Circular Key tomorrow in Sydney. And I said, I'll just have a look at the diary. Oh, yeah, I'm available. <laughs> so I went down and uh, had a drink with him and that was before I made Wolf Creek. So wow. he's a good judge of character. So it was Kill Bill that you originally wanted you for then? No, no, no. Two, oh, no 2003 no, was no, it was no, out, no, weren't no. it? He wanted me for Death Proof right. and then he changed his mind and, and, Turned it from the dingo bar to something else. And guess who played the role he wanted me to play? Go on. Quinn. He took my part, the bastard. <laughs> but anyway, he made up for it and gave me the, the role in Django. And that was that was better than not part in the bar anyway. Yeah, I mean, that film is one of the greatest films of the modern era. It's absolutely yeah. incredible. And he is one of the greatest filmmakers of all time. Yeah. What was that? experience like just going for a drink with him i can imagine that he absolutely motor mouths and non-stop just nerding out about your career and yeah. just film in general he probably knows more about your film career and everything oh, you've been in more than you do he's he just does. that type of guy he does um yeah th that was the talk was about that uh i asked him how he how he goes about writing scripts because i think pulp fiction scripts r really interesting it's not the usual run-of-the-mill scripts and he's got a a, a a thing with dialogue this mm. is really interesting and he talks about hamburgers in France and gets away with it, you know. Um, and so that was interesting. But mainly he asked me about films I was in and how shots were shot and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. It's crazy. He's, even today he still treats himself like a student of the game, doesn't he? Like yeah. he just wants to pick everyone's brains. And yeah, yeah. And he's got a photographic memory and he's really insanely intelligent guy. And um, I asked him if he'd seen um, Wake in Wake in Fright, which is a really amazing Australian film, was made in 1971, and Ted Gottschalk, who directed uh, Rambo, right. was the director of it. And I said, hey, Quentin, have you seen um, Wake in Fright? And he says, yeah, I made in 71, Ted Gottschalk directed it. They did a reprint, and you know, this guy did that, and it was edited in that, and blah, blah, blah. I said, I just asked you if you'd seen the <laughs> thing, you know? <laughs> but he's an amazing guy. Yeah. He is.
last film coming out as well. Like, are you going to be on the phone to him saying, come on, if there's a spot for me, just make one, even if it's like a two two minute cameo or something like that. It's menace to wait till you're asked, you know. He, he, he still talks about me. So yeah. um, I was watching a podcast with Bill Maher, I think, and uh, Bill Maher said, um, who would you get to kill um, Abraham Lincoln? And he says, John Jarrett. <laughs> <laughs> so he's still thinking of me. <laughs> And just in terms of your career, upcoming projects, we spoke about Wolf Creek 3. Um, is there any other forays into the horror genre that can, we can expect from you in the future? Yeah, well, I, I've got an idea for a, my own horror film, but I, I got, once Wolf Creek is done, I don't want to get in the right of that, and uh, we'll do Wolf Creek, and then in the future, you know, I, I kind of like the genre, and I've, I've sort of cut a path into it, so I want to keep going with it in some way or another, and I've written other other films. Uh, I'm making films these days. I nice. made a film called What About Sal, which will be out in Australia in next April. And I've written a comedy. I've written a comedy western called Passing Winds, Australian <laughs> sort of cross between Crocodile Dundee and um, and uh, Blazing Saddles. You know, yeah. So I, I keep busy. Amazing. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Yeah. You've got a ton of great energy about you and just enjoy the rest of the day. Last day now. I really yeah. appreciate your time.